So it's my privilege uh, to present to you someone who just came from Japantown yep. uh, for the Day of Remembrance there. It's very important, but uh, also I think is a tremendously rising star for all of the Asian Americans in the state of California, and one that I think uh, because of his background, because of his focus on education, his consensus building, uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, constant uh, communication with him uh, as he uh, uh, works to represent all of us in Congress. And he's already made history. He's the first LGBT uh, representative in uh, Congress uh, on behalf not just for California but for the whole nation. So I want to present to you uh, the 41st uh, Congress representative for, from the state of California, Mark DeCona. And thank you to your office, Jason, uh, for opening up this community uh, to me and for me to reconnect with uh, folks uh, that I've uh, known through my more than 20 years in politics uh, in California and to connect uh, anew uh, with people here. Um, well, you know, I think uh, my election has legitimized the word Gaijin. <laughs> um, I know that there was a play in East LA uh, written by a Latino, actually entitled Gaytino, but I'm not actually using that re reference yet because I'm not sure it's quite legitimate, but um, uh, Barney Frank uh, has legitimized it. He said uh, uh, another member of the House came to me and said, we've got our first uh, Gaysian in the House, and that was probably my conduct. <laughs> Well, well, let me. I just came from Japan Town, Nihonmachi, where we were uh, observing the, the, the Day of Remembrance for uh, uh, you know the World War II internment and the 25th anniversary of uh, the Civil Liberties uh, Act of of uh, 1988. And you know, it's amazing to think that uh, it was a Democratic Congress and a Republican president, Ronald Reagan, that put that and an act of bipartisanship that came together uh, to recognize a wrong uh, that was done by our nation. And that, to me, makes our nation a great nation. Uh, but to think that we can maybe bring back those days where we can do great things um, was part of the hope I came away with at that event. Uh, one of the first things that I did, uh, actually just two weeks ago, uh, my chief of staff brought to me um, uh, a message from the Equality Caucus asking whether or not I would sign on to the amicus brief uh, on the Windsor case before the Supreme Court. Those of you who are lawyers know what the Windsor case is. It's one of the cases that's seeking to overturn the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, and one of the great things that you get to do when you're a member of Congress is you get to do things like this. We're not going to get the vote on it, probably because of what's happening with who's controlling the agenda of the House, which is the Republicans. But I can still do little things, um, which may then be big things, is to join the several members of Congress who are differing from the Republican majority. The Republican majority is funding the appeal um, of the DOMA cases because President Obama is refusing to allow his Justice Department to be used to that. Let's clap for that one. Um, uh, so I, I will join those members of Congress in uh, seeking to put forth in the amicus curiae brief before the, con before the, the Supreme Court um, our voice. Uh, and so that's what's weird about being a representative is I get to be the voice uh, for what I believe is the right side of history. Uh, I was also on the day of the inauguration, able to, uh, I, well not able, but I, I agreed uh, to sign a petition uh, saying that I would not cut Social Security and that I would not uh, countenance any raise in the retirement, uh, raise in the eligibility age for Medicare. I'm very pleased to say that here. Even though that within 24, I think 48 hours 
125,000 Americans signed that online petition. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, that's one of the other things I like to do as a, as a representative of the people, uh, is I, I get to try to <coughs> extend the terms of the debate. And we were letting the president know, and my colleagues know, um, that we weren't going to go back on the promise that we made to um, Americans. Um, and I, I remember going on gardening uh, trips with my grandfather, uh, Isao Takano, who was an Issei immigrant, who had lost his uh, property. Well, actually, it wasn't his property. It was his wife's property. He never became a citizen, and he was never able to buy property, right? We all know this history, the Chinese Exclusion Act, and the Japanese, the alien land laws. Uh, he wasn't able to buy property. Uh, property was bought in the name of uh, my grandmother, uh, Kazue, uh, originally Ta Kazue Takahashi. She was born here, 20 years his junior. They owned uh, about five acres of land in downtown Bellevue, Washington. Uh, and as you know, Bellevue, Washington is now far from the greenhouses that were once there that they originally bought the $2,500 property. Uh, it's now a Red Lion Hotel that stands on that property. Uh, they couldn't pay the taxes while they were in the property taxes while they were in Tule Lake. And so they lost that property. Uh, resettled in Riverside County, and that's why I'm one of the relatively few Japanese Americans that come from that county. Uh, so he rebuilt his life there as, a, as an immigrant uh, who spoke very little English had five little children and a wife, Kazwa, who eventually, uh, uh, who, who did lose her sanity and was not able to, uh, was mentally uh, disabled for the rest of her life. And so he, he set about the task of uh, uh, rebuilding his life, never was able to rebuild his farming, uh, his, his ambitions to be a farmer, uh, and so he ended up being a gardener, like so many Japanese Americans <coughs> did in that generation. Uh, and uh, his hard work, his hard work and the work of his son, who went to the community college, Riverside Community College, uh, worked his way through. I remember the day that uh, he uh, was able to get his degree, his diploma from Cal Poly Pomona. My brothers and I were all uh, in attendance at his graduation. I must have been nine or ten years old at the time, but I knew that our life was going to change. And I'm telling you a story that all of you are nodding to recognize how we as an Asian community believe so much in education um, and how much in this country it is the uh, tool by which we have climbed into the middle class and beyond. Uh, well, it was my grandfather's hard work, my father's hard work, three generations of striving have culminated here in me. Uh, I'm a United States Congressman. And, uh, I, go ahead. <laughs> And you know, I know I must have felt like, I, I mean, I, I know you when you took your oath of office, uh, when you were elected by the people, uh, I mean, you were too lit, legit to quit. <laughs> <laughs> he's very legit and he's it. <laughs> uh, what it's like uh, to, break that, to break that barrier. And uh, oh my God, the, and the first Asian American mayor of, San Francisco, uh, to be the first, you know, open the gay member of Congress from California, and to be the first person of color to have that distinction. Um, you know, these things all come together. Uh, you know, there's, it's no accident uh, uh, that the very first uh, LGBT person of color should be, you know, uh, should be an Asian American. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, was stuck in the Judici Judiciary Committee. And the brave person that moved it out was Barney Frank of Massachusetts, who was stuck in the subcommittee. And he moved it out, and in 1994, when I'm under attack uh, by my opponent, and Ed, uh, I, when I told him the story, he was like, <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, I was hosting a fundraiser for me here in San Francisco, and I said, you know, they put out a mailer that said, you know, is Mark Takano going to be a congressman from Riverside? And he opened up the mailer and said, or San Francisco. <laughs> and he said, they did that? He says, well, then we better doubly make sure that you get elected to send a message, uh, you know, that that, you know, was not right. 
Well, in 1994, uh, when I'm suffering these homophobic attacks, I'm in Salt Lake City, where the Japanese American National Citizens League Convention is being held. And uh, they're debating the question on, on same-sex unions. And uh, the convention's divided. It's in Salt Lake City. The host of the, the, host of the convention is just like up in arms, you know, because you know, he's from a very conservative community. And then who goes to the floor but our own Norm Mandetta? And he reminds the convention. We owe the redress bill in great part to the selfless act of Bonnie Frank, a gay man who has almost no Asian constituents. And says, we have to stand up for the right side of history. And people tell me that it was Norma at a speech that carried the day with the JCL. And they became the first <coughs> non-LGBT civil rights organization uh, to join uh, and endorse same-sex unions. Uh, where did the, the whole, the whole uh, actual legal action get started? But in the state of Hawaii. And it was the Hawaii Supreme Court that sort of lays down the first legal marker, which says, you know, that uh, we have to recognize these relationships. Uh, and of course, I don't want to take anything from San Francisco and what, what occurred here, but you know, it's, it's also a city with a significant Asian population. And the, the political infrastructure that put Gavin Newsom into power and the, the Board of Supervisors could not have happened without a, an Asian community. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm proud to be a Gaijin. Um, I'm proud to represent uh, uh, not just a, a district, but also, I think, uh, the right side of history for our community. Um, and so I'm very, very pleased to be here today. And I'm, I'm overwhelmed by uh, your reception and your goodwill. And uh, along with Mayor Lee, I hope to be doing a lot of good work on behalf of all Americans. Thank you so much. Since this is uh, Chinese New Year, I think that uh, we're going to just open up the uh, reception. But uh, our seniors um, might need to go back up to their room for dinner. So on behalf of Suffer for the Elderly, I'd like to invite the seniors to present the little souvenir that they made for you. Uh, to remember them, as you go to Congress and fight for us, we are to say social security and never forget <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.